to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Daniel chapter 3. Let me show you something. We're going to pray. This is Babylon under the leadership of this king called Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar, the king, made an image of gold. Please look up. Here we see the manifestation of the spirit of the Antichrist again. He will always bring an image to worship. The image can be money. The image can be fame. The image can be lost. The image can be anything. The king made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits. You know what this? 90 feet and the breadth thereof six cubits and set it up in the plain of dura in the province of babylon we are reading pay attention nebuchadnezzar now watch this this is the whole theme of this scripture is worship the antichrist system worship not money not fame not even persecution worship but look at the structure of that worship before he built that image he made sure that every noble person was on his side. Look at those who were there. Nebuchadnezzar the king sent together the princes, governors, captains. Are you seeing all those who he won? Judges, treasurers, counselors, sheriffs, rulers over provinces. These are the people who came to the dedication of that image. What do we call that? Influence. What else is left as far as authority in society is concerned? These are the mind control systems. He made sure they were all represented in that dedication. Again, princes, governors, captains, judges, treasurers. There you find it. Treasurers, counselors, sheriffs, rulers of the provinces come to the dedication of that image which the king has set up so when he sets up an image over a territory he does not disturb everybody yet he begins to scan where is that millionaire businessman come where is that gospel artist that has potentials to go around the world come when he gathers all the influencers he now builds the image watch this verse 3 and the princes, governors, captains, judges, treasurers, counselors, sheriffs, rulers were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. They stood before the image. Uh-huh. Be patient. Then there was a cry. To you is commanded, not suggested, commanded. O people, see how the Antichrist system works. When it captures the nobles within a territory, then decrees begin to come gradually, gradually until it looks like it is something that is forceful. It is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, verse 5, that at the time you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the psaltery, and all of this, you will do what? Fall down and worship the image. Smart king. He did not say, Worship me, but you just worship my image while I stand back and I enjoy the same thing. You see that now? Satan may not come to you directly and say, worship me. It will be too much and you, you have enough sense. So he will say, do you know what? Just worship your job. Just worship your business. Provided it is not Jesus Christ, worship any other thing you are allowed. Because any other thing that is not him, I have power over it. Hmm. Worship your certificate. Worship your political position. Worship your achievement. Worship your beauty. Worship your intelligence. Even worship your anointing. Oh yes. Worship your church. 
worship your religious activities provided it is not Jesus the son I'm satisfied any other thing I can put my image there I can put my image in your business I can put my image in your reputation I can put it anywhere the only thing see everything can be Satan's image if it is minus Jesus please keep the scripture we'll soon be praying fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up verse 6 and whoso does not fall down and worship shall the same hour be cast into the midst of burning fiery furnace why do you call the issue of finances economic meltdown what made it melt so therefore at that time when all the people had the sound and so on and so forth they fell down and worshipped all all of them when you see the people who inspire you falling down you will be motivated to join them and fall down too when the billionaire businessman who is your boss is worshipping and increasing in the billions while you are going to church and getting broke sooner or later your wife will say i don't understand this thing you are doing and initially you think he will not touch you until your child returns back from his school with the school fees they drive them away you say you know what god i've tried for you anything you see me do don't blame me there is an exhaustion satan knows something about man that except you are engraced by god you cannot suffer long indefinitely there will be a breaking point so he will meet you at that point just when you graduated you were on fire from fellowship on campus oh why don't you you know just um join this club or join this group you will become a million ah no in the name of jesus he knows he will allow time he will meet you after five years and say are you still here and you say come what did you even say before let me, i will agree but just explain let me understand now give us that scripture hmm. verse 8 now wherefore at the time at at that time certain chaldeans came near and accused the jews now we're going to see a contrast of kingdoms verse 9 they speak and said to king nebuchadnezzar O king live forever that's what the king wants thou hast made a decree that every man shall hear the sound of all of these instruments and shall fall down and worship you 11 whoso does not fall down and worship he should be cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace verse 12 now he says there are certain jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring these boys, and they brought them before the king. This is the price that you pay for being different in a territory that is immersed in a system that is godless nebuchadnezzar spake and said it is true O shadrach meshach and abednego do not ye serve my gods nor worship the golden image which i have set up 15. if you hear all of these things make sure he says listen he says if ye worship not ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of the burning fiery furnace and who is that god that shall deliver you out of my hands it has moved from the issue of worship to the issue of loyalty to god i love shadrach meshach abednego joshua selman answered the king and said unto him watch this O king when it has to do with matters of sociology and matters of governance we give you the respect that is due you but now that you have touched the issue of faith we are not careful to answer you in this matter 17 it says if it be so let me tell you that we are a people number one who are motivated by our love for god greater than result are you seeing the contrast of the kingdom life 
in the kingdom of darkness you are motivated by things ultimately to bow to satan whether you like him or not in this kingdom it is the love of god more than money more than fame more than titles here are people who are not only about to lose their office and their reputation lose their lives and they say if it is on account of that we are more than ready our god whom we serve he is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of thy hand O king 18 he says but if not what sort of a people are these that's the first time the king is hearing that there are people who do not mind we will not serve thy gods nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up 19 then nebuchadnezzar was angry how many people have refused to be promoted because they know that once they are promoted there will be justice there will be equity how many people are you seeing the reason why many people don't do so much and yet they prosper and we sit down there saying they are prospering more than us no do you know who and what they bow to satan was a witness when you were rolling in your living room that lord everything i have is yours then the next thing you just delve into oil and gas and the gods of the sea say you are joking we were there when we saw that worship you will not easily just win a contract like that if there was no adversary there will not be need for dominion please keep that scripture we're about to pray pay attention now he commanded notice are you seeing the first thing he did command the fire to be seven times hotter in their presence they are not yet inside but let them see the potential of the destruction that can come per adventure they will change verse 20 hmm. and he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind them what does it mean to bind to limit to limit them and cast them into the burning fiery furnace follow me carefully we're almost done then these men bound in their coats and so on and so forth they were cast into the fire verse 22 therefore because of the king's commandment because the king's commandment was urgent the furnace was exceedingly hot the flame of the fire slew even the men that took up shadrach meshach and abednego imagine such a furnace and this man they fell down into the midst of the fire why satan wanted let me tell you this there is nothing that rewards satan more than punishing a dedicated believer in the presence of other potential delivers because when they see the pain of one who loves god so much and things go bad it becomes it it amplifies the fear that's why when satan wants to attack believers he does not start with ordinary people he looks for those who have some kind of influence and then he deals with them in a way that discredits god so much this is the strategy next verse verse 24 nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished now these ladies and gentlemen i present to you the power of this kingdom that we represent Isn't it amazing that when God is silent, it is a message. Satan continues to do what he's doing. But it gets to a time when you stand strong, where you stand hopeful, and know that this kingdom, whether you lift me or not, oh God, I will not bow. Ah. Lord, I will bow to you, to no other God. But you, Lord, Lord, I will worship you. Nothing hands can me. But you, Lord, and I will lay down my idols and thrones I have made. And all that has taken my heart Sing, Lord, I will bow I will bow to you To no other God 
but you hear me believers i bring you a message no matter who you are the strength of your allegiance to this kingdom will be tested in your lifetime i give you a guarantee by the god of heaven this one you will not pray it away you will only pray for grace to remain and see god show himself strong and mighty some of you as i'm speaking right now that is the season you are in it is on account of your strength for god you would have gotten a job five years ago if only you compromise but because you are standing you are now even looking like a fool family members are saying keep being stupid then they coin a scripture and say wisdom is profitable to direct Is it Christianity we will eat? They will tell you. And you feel stupid for loving him. There are many people who have lost election today who have the credibility but because they made up their minds that they will do it right. Sometimes being right comes with a price. Just because you are right does not always mean you will experience temporal victory. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Let me show you scripture here. If we do not train believers to know that there is a system that attempts to sabotage our allegiance to God, we must get to a point where we restore honor to those who are in pains on account of their dignity for God. Can I tell you this? There are people that have died today simply because they will not renounce Christ. There are people today who may not be experiencing the kind of growth, maybe ministry, because they will not go somewhere and get any other power outside of Jesus Christ and say, Lord Jesus, if you will not heal, I rather stay and say I do not have the grace, but my hand will not touch any charm or anything to make sure anybody is healed. Can I tell you this? The ways of the kingdom looks deceptfully slow. Everybody will seem to go ahead of you. You are a man of God and God wants to raise you to be a mighty man. And somebody calls you some group and tells you, look, you do ministry this way, you are going to suffer. It doesn't have to be an occultic thing. Just anything that takes you away from Jesus. And it looks marketable. There is a strategy that can increase membership for you. The worst one now is the issue of finance and comfort because the truth is we live in times you know for a long time the church has been shying away from this I'm not talking about some of these carnal things you see around money mm, but I'm talking about if we ignore the place I taught in Zaria maybe I'll wrap up with it there, there are four dimensions to the gospel that if we do not teach believers one spirituality two leadership and governance three relationships for economy if believers are not empowered with these dimensions of spiritual knowledge they will remain slaves forever in any territory they find themselves in when you die you will go to heaven oh, but as far as earth is concerned you will be a servant a slave forever spirituality men who love jesus sincerely not just as preachers not just as preachers i'll be here bowing down all of the days of my life i'll be here bowing down all of the days of my life i'll be here worshiping all of the days of my life i'll be here worshiping all of the days of my life five years after marriage no child very soon your family will call you and say look there is a man he's not exactly bad there's just something that we are used to it, it all of us that's how you even came self and yet in your visions the interesting thing is that while satan is doing all this nonsense you will go back to bed and see that god will not change what he has been saying 
your womb will carry a prophet be careful be careful be careful and all kinds of suggestions are coming from everywhere satan is building that image my brothers and my sisters let me tell you this many times you feel stupid when you look around and it looks like you are not moving forward sometimes respectfully speaking loved ones and people who are sincere can look at you and say look at this you graduated 20 years ago till now you have not even built a house the only thing growing in your life is your age look at your classmates he's even in dubai he's everywhere there and sometimes you say lord is this your plan for me when jesus was on that cross you would have called him defeated but something was happening that you did not see he hung between the nails and while he was hanging, Caesar, Herod, and Co. were saying, finally. And Satan was rejoicing. Since you will not bow, I will hang you on a tree. Either ways, you will have to listen to me. And he closed his eyes in death. Hell was rejoicing. We killed the Son of God. Suddenly a stranger steps into Hades the place of the dead what are you doing here and he says when sinners die where do they go i became seen now i'm here and the cohorts of hell were all on him how else would he tell us that he is victorious until we we have to see it in a context and that was the context satan and the cohorts of hell paul was shown this in a revelation fighting to force him now to bow down and when the legal claims of justice were made the bible says he made a public show of them watch this triumphing over them in judgment he now meets face to face with the one he created and said lucifer your rebellion Give me the keys. This is the kingdom we are part of. Revelation chapter 1. I was he that was dead and now is alive and I have the keys. That's where he got it from. Watch this. When he held that key, he went to Hades. Apostle Peter taught us. He preached to the saints right who had been waiting for this miracle of salvation they died in faith believing and when they believed he opened those prisons and he said let's go the hymn writer says up from the grave he arose when he came out he came out together with all those people watch this now the last enemy to be destroyed is death and he destroyed death and with power and glory the disciples were shaking you wasted our time we were part of this system now you brought a new kingdom we've lost everything we look like failures but when he resurrected he said all hail he entered the room without opening the door he's showing you the potentials of this kingdom that means look i used to think doors have to open for you to enter but i learned that there is still a way the door can still be closed and you will enter all hail he said all authority in heaven and on earth is given to me i know you look like failures for walking with me for three and a half years but you are about to see the power in this kingdom go with this authority Go and disciple nations. Teach them everything I've taught you. Teach them that somewhere in their life, they may see a similitude of defeat, but they should wait. Teach them everything I taught you. And while you teach them, I am with you. I will confirm your words with signs. Confirm your words with miracles. Hear me. Every time evil seems to prevail over good, 
something is happening that is true for this nation that is true for africa can i tell you this our beloved country and our beloved continent there's an army rising up there's an army I'm telling you by prophecy and from scripture it will not end the way you are seeing it like this no see Jesus is not coming back as king of a weak beaten defeated church the kingdom that we serve for a long time it looks like it's a shame to be a child of God but I tell you we're about to enter an era of the apostolic move of God upon the earth economically politically this nation will experience something that it has never seen from independence i tell you this by the spirit of god listen where death ends is also where resurrection starts for now it does not yet appear what god is doing in your life sometimes as we preach the gospel as servants of the living god People even look at us as a nuisance to civilization. What are you teaching? Calm down. You may not see it yet, but something is happening. From the spirit of God, through our spirit, to your spirit man and your mind. When Satan wanted to propagate this demonic software of Babylon, it is a spirit, then belief systems, then destruction. Now that God is bringing deliverance, it comes from the spirit through a new belief system. It takes a while. You may not look like it, oh politician, but God saved you from winning that election because there is one you are going to. Let me show you something. We have read the end of the book. We know what will happen. Hmm. Revelations 18. I know you look cheated. I know you look defeated. Brothers and sisters, look at me. Let me show you how Babylon will end. The Bible already told us the end. After these things, I saw another angel come from heaven having great power and the earth was lightened with his glory what an angel next verse and he cried mightily with a strong voice saying babylon the great is falling is fallen and is become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit now follow carefully i want to show you something and then we'll pray for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication so babylon is a goddess she sits upon a horse until you fraternize with her you will not reign in this kingdom she has called politicians she has called men of god she has called business people you want to rise it is not the way it's not just about this school thing <clears throat> come let us get into a partnership there are many people today that you continue to admire let me tell you the truth their excelling is based on their fraternity with babylon let me show you the end of the story it says the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her and the merchants businessmen there it is the merchants of the earth are works rich how through the abundance of her delicacy then I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her. This is the word for you now. You are almost getting there, but come out of her, my people. Why? That ye be not partakers of her sins, that ye, that ye receive not of her plagues. There is a plague that is coming on the earth. 
for her sins have reached unto heaven and god had remembered her iniquity be patient watch this it says reward her even as she rewarded you and double her according to this and that and that next verse it says how much she has glorified herself the pride of this antichrist system called babylon and live deliciously so much torment and sorrow give her for she said in her heart i sit a queen and i am no widow and i shall see no sorrow this is babylon talking therefore shall her plagues come in how long death mourning famine she shall be utterly burnt with fire for strong is the lord who judged her watch this and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning standing afar off for the fear of her torment saying alas alas that great city babylon that mighty city in one hour is your judgment come now watch this let me show you it says the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn for her and no man buyeth her merchandise anymore there are people buying it now they are buying let me show you what she sells do you want to see what she sells babylon let's see what babylon sells number one the merchandise of gold the merchandise of silver precious stones pearls fine linen purple silk scarlet cyan wood all manner of vessels of ivory all manner of precious wood of brass of iron of marble pay attention to 13 cinnamon odors she sells anointing she sells frankincense she sells wine she sells all kinds of graces she sells abundance she sells wheat let's start reading now she sells beasts she sells sheep. she sells horses she even sells chariots let's what else does she sell slaves and what all they are her products she can give you influence the souls of men as an artist you can get into fraternity with her and sing anything and the world must listen to you because she has sold you the souls of men where did she get those souls the ones who came to do business with her what shall it profit a man if he gains so as she's giving you there's something she collects and sells it to whoever wants now here's what the bible says i it says that you prosper is that true and be in health but make sure your soul does not become the commodity that goes in exchange I can tell you there are people who have sold their souls to the devil not by saying Satan take no the more you leave God as you rise there is an exchange that is happening the more your fame increases and your fire goes down business people hear me respectfully speaking because this money thing sometimes brings a lot of arrogance one people have money i'm a billionaire i'm a millionaire whether in naira or dollars or whatever currency usually that state deafens people and they don't listen to anything again i am rich the mistake of i think the laudation church they said i am rich i have no need for anything anything that would take your place in my life may it never come any door that would take your place in my life may it never open why have i taught you this today number one to help you see the motivation behind the evil in our society it is not a sociological issue it is not just an educational issue in truth from a sociological standpoint when we start addressing the ills in society we look at indices like education, quality of living, governance, and the rest, and we are right. But that is the reason why our law courts will continually prosecute criminals because there is a software. They go to prison, they come out, they return back, they come out, they return back, they come out, they return back because their bodies are merciless executors of a mindset that only the gospel can erode. 
the gospel in its entirety the message and the value system respectfully speaking and not not to create any sense with with every sense of honor and respect it is also the reason why families do not last it is statistic tells us i hope i'm right that one out of every two marriages may not last long and will end it doesn't mean the people are wrong it is that somebody somewhere or both of them have exposed themselves to a programming that is not consistent with the kingdom is there a way to prosper with the dignity of kingdom integrity yes what is the solution it is called the gospel now you know that the gospel is not only a message that saves you have received the message that saves now receive the ideology that transforms the ideology that transforms you the ideology that transforms your society you can take that ideology like a software program it to your children if you never see them again you can trust what they will become the software is that powerful this is why we have to pray that God will raise people who are connected to kingdom first then we now spread them across the seven strata of human activities a politician that is not just a Christian fanatic but one who understands the kingdom will be in a better position to legislate because number one he knows that God is the God of all flesh he's not in that office to represent Christians he's in that office to represent God's creation so his ideas even though reference from scripture will be communicated in a way and a manner that makes all and sundry to advance in their lives fanatism is not an honor to any religion concerned it is still a deception by Satan because it punishes all involved. Fanatism and religion does not profit one party or the other. It looks like it profits one party. But when the full scope of the deception is unleashed, everyone involved suffers. Can I tell you this? When God sent me to this city, one of the graces and one of the instructions and one of the things that he gave is that by the grace of God, God wants to raise a people who are kingdom people, but people of influence. He will station them in strategic positions, but they will not just be people who are going around to earn a living. They are people who know that they are there on assignment. This is why he gave us the grace. I'm not a politician. I don't do politics. I don't do partisan politics. I'm a man of God. But let me submit to you. God has given us the authority that enthrones kings and removes them. It is true. What is our assignment tonight? Understand. Go back home now and see your child who is always stealing. It is not the stealing. You can flog that child till tomorrow. Go back as a priest, not just a father. Call that child. And say in addition to what you are going to receive the spirit that is behind you in the name of Jesus Christ are you seeing that now go back as a politician and enter your office stretch your hands over the National Assembly and say in the name of Jesus I stand not just as a an honorable member or a senator I stand with priesthood and I speak let the kingdom come within this fair as a business person don't just resume work tomorrow no everyone who is coming is is in one of two kingdoms you are not just there to buy and sell listen we must develop a new value system let me encourage all of you who own schools here i know there are a number of people here that own schools within this city and across this nation I beseech you by the mercy of God without any sense of fanatism introduce programs that correct destructive beliefs there are programs it doesn't matter whether people write it in the exam or not let there be programs that help people honesty morality and conscience spiritual growth leadership financial intelligence introduce this so that the children from infancy will begin to learn ethics of responsibility and they grow to become people who will change society 
and I pray that in the name of Jesus God will empower people here I know that God has helped people but God will empower people that will set up quality leadership institutes that the day will come is out of those institutes who enthrone kings within territories merely saying one day you know a society will change is just a joke there must be programs and there must be intelligence applied to it have i wasted your time tonight the seven mountains religion god is helping us we who are the servants of god the mountain of family this is one area that god has raised marvelous vessels like pastor kingsley oh yes oh yes you cannot tell how many homes and how many lives have been put back in order because he honored that grace what of politics there are several politicians here god is counting on you not just to be a fanatic but to be a nation builder to come up with perspectives that are referenced from scripture that your presence there will ward off darkness you can be an apostle in politics then media arts and entertainment we've discussed it here can i tell you this my brothers and my sisters when we talk about the revival that is coming we're not necessarily just talking about crusades alone the context of the move of god coming will not just be spiritual in that area alone civilization has evolved god will have to bring people with intelligence we are already there at the crusade grounds everybody will not be there we will keep casting the devils and healing the sick but in addition we will keep helping people who will rise everybody here is connected to a family somehow go back and begin to change that software be intentional you are a father don't sit down and allow your children to learn anything and grow and just give them money and cars that's not an inheritance you are a politician make up your mind don't just leave and exhaust your tenure start mentoring others not just godfatherism mentorship teach them the ethics of governance you are a businessman don't just as we call it in nigeria the slang chop alone and don't just give people money that's not the only thing they need most people don't need money most people need a transformed mind create a platform of four or five people and help them the value of influence is that you are able to lift others with that platform god gives you i must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day he leaves you with an assurance that the night cometh when no man will be able to walk again but i tell you this god has brought us to such a time as this we must stand up and fight babylon we do not just fight with bows and spheres alone number one we fight by introducing the gospel to the system first as a message the more people are saved the more god can find many men that he can use to promote his agenda number two we must bring the ideology of the kingdom we must translate the ideology of the kingdom into programs including sociological programs that the world can receive many of them will not receive it from a standpoint of fanatism it must not be a christian's program it must come a value system reference from scripture that is intentional about changing people three things you should never fight as i round up number one do not fight the value of spiritual connection you will lose in today's world the strength of every man is in his spiritual connection number two do not fight any opportunity to learn leadership leadership has nothing to do with titles you must know how influence is produced it is the key to making men buy into your ideologies number three do not fight relationships be fruitful means re be relational everything multiplies because of relationship it is based on your relationship with the holy spirit that you grow number four do not fight economy please do not fight economy do not fight economy don't go around saying all these people preaching prosperity be careful i know there are imbalances but don't join the devil in in misleading believers a territory 
that is not economically empowered will be the territory that serves there is a dimension of the gospel that requires economic empowerment and i know that god is going to raise people i'm unashamed about it your heart must not be there your heart will be with jesus and then he will give you resources that are equivalent to the resources of a nation and you will do wonders as for me i made a vow and a covenant with god that as a spiritual leader i will not just lead a people who are passionate towards god signs and wonders miracles that's wonderful but in addition to that i believe in influence and then inculcating value systems that can transform society abuja and this nation and this continent is too small if god can find people enough who are connected spiritually understand leadership people who understand this kingdom networking and then people who are economically empowered this will be satan's nightmare this will also be the nightmare of the antichrist system are you ready to pray father let your kingdom come lift your voice and pray let your kingdom come let your kingdom come let your kingdom come in the name of jesus christ now we understand the motivation behind the ills in our lives ills in our society ills in family that more than just the things that happen more than crime and decadence and cultism and corruption there is a spiritual problem that must be addressed the spiritual problem number one is rejecting jesus and rejecting his value system and that has come because of a programming a mindset fortified by demon spirits called the antichrist system is a babylonian strategy Babylon, babylonian here means it is a spiritual context lift your voice and pray we are that generation that will not bow in the name of jesus yet we will rise we will excel and represent the purposes of the kingdom because of our presence in this city advancement of all sorts will find expression because of our presence in this nation in governance in politics go ahead and pray we decree and declare in the name of jesus the christ of god dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the face of development lord grant me the discipline